This video is brought to you by Rev Motorsport, but stick around till the end to hear more about that. Why can't F1 cars pass in a DRS train? We hear the term DRS train a lot, but I wanted to dive deeper today into what exactly a DRS train is and why, for some reason, the leading car usually isn't overtaken, despite not having the benefit of that sweet rear wing flap opening. Right, so let's do the basics first. The drag reduction system was introduced by Formula One to encourage overtaking. It's something that some fans enjoy, others don't. And hopefully, if you're someone who doesn't enjoy this quite artificial element of F1, we won't be seeing it for too much longer. With the 2022 F1 cars having a complete revamp of their aerodynamics and how the cars behave when following other cars, the aim is to scrap it by 2023. That is, of course, if the F1 teams haven't ruined the calculations completely by coming up with other intuitive ways to gain performance but mess up those smoother air particles that F1 were hoping the cars were going to produce. Formula 1 has a very difficult job in judging where DRS zones should be and also how many to have. Of course, you can never have a DRS zone with any kind of significant corner in the mix because the loss of rear downforce is so extreme that the cars would simply fly off the track. I do remember Red Bull though, back in the day when DRS was first introduced, being the only team to take turn 8 at Turkey with DRS being open. That was pretty sensational. Anyway, back to the job that F1 has. Judgment of where the activation point will be for the cars is an incredibly difficult task. You want the driver to be able to have a chance into the braking zone, but not have already flown past by the time they get there. It's impossible to have it work perfectly every time because of differing straight line speeds, but there's also a possibility you can put the DRS zone too late into the straight to not have much of an effect at all. This is where a DRS train usually comes in. To clarify, a DRS train is when a number of cars are following each other all within one second, but not being able to really make any sort of significant moves on the opponent ahead. The driver at the head of the pack, or as I'm now going to name them the train conductor, of course does not receive the addition benefit of less drag but still isn't able to be passed. Why? Let's use Hungary as a great example of a track where we can see a DRS train form. The final corner at the Hungara ring is a pretty difficult corner to follow a car in in these current technical regulations, meaning that you can't get massively close if you're the car behind. This gives the leading driver a bit of a buffer when heading down the straight where they'll lack straight line speed compared to the cars behind. There is then not the longest straight in the world before you're braking again for turn one, so it does not give the car behind enough of an opportunity to use the slipstream and DRS to their advantage. That's one problem. The even tougher problem is for the drivers that are third, fourth, fifth and so on in the queue. They have to try and pass the car ahead who has the same benefit of the slipstream and DRS that you're receiving. Which means it's pretty much a level playing field and you have to pass them like you had to in the good old days before any of these artificial tools, which is pretty impossible if you're in similar performing machinery. The leading car in the pack obviously does everything in their power to keep the cars behind too, making sure that their energy deployment is in the right areas to give them the boost they need in the vulnerable points for overtaking. So in a nutshell, we gotta blame the tracks for when DRS trains form. If there isn't a long enough straight or the cars really suffer in turbulent air in the corners prior, Barcelona I'm also looking at you for this one, then we see a train form and no real overtaking, which makes us F1 fans very sad indeed. Oh, and we can also blame the way the cars are built currently too, and how badly they perform when following other cars. There you have it, an insight into what a DRS train is and why we see little overtaking. Are you a fan of DRS? Let us know in the comment section below. Before you go, have you heard of Rev? Rev is the utility token that serves as the primary currency of purchase, utility and action across all Rev Motorsport blockchain games by Animoca Brands. Rev is designed to enable true digital ownership of game assets, giving players freedom and control over their NFT in-game items across a growing metaverse of racing games. The biggest benefits of playing these games is the fact that you have true digital ownership over your digital assets. This is made possible using blockchain technology, allowing assets to be unique, have rarity and so they have scarcity and value built into them. They are also fully transparent. If the asset is sold by Tom and bought by me for example, this is all traceable and instills an inherent value within the asset. You could easily take a picture of the car NFT and put it up for sale but that ultimately has no value. Think of it as printing a picture of the Mona Lisa and hanging that up on your wall. 
The environment is a big talking point with NFTs, and there is a lot of different information floating around. Yes, Bitcoin mining uses a lot of energy. However, most NFTs are built on Ethereum, and while still using energy in mining the currency, requires less. Rev builds their games on chains that require much less energy consumption than both of those, and utilizes Layer 2 solutions as well as proof-of-stake blockchains that essentially bundle thousands of transactions into one before sending it through, making the whole process way more efficient in every way. So what are you waiting for? Go check out Rev.